Hello, my name is Manjot Singh. I'm an enterprise architect at MariaDB. I'm here to talk to you about MariaDB migrations. Uh, what we have here is our MariaDB training, and in this specific module, we're going to talk about our methodology and the processes that we use uh, when we do a migration and what we recommend to our customers and users. Our objectives here in this module are to gain an understanding of migration methodology, describe the key roles of a migration team, and understand the migration process. Upgrading to MariaDB is viable. It can be done easily with a good process. And what we're going to do today is talk about MariaDB, how we transition to it, some of our PL SQL compatibility features, and other advanced features. The process that we follow at a high level is we do an assessment. We make a, a go or no-go decision. We want to understand uh, what work is involved to move to MariaDB and what's needed to move forward. Uh, we do our schema migration. After that, and we include our tables, our constraints, indices, views. And following that, we will start working on our stored code migration and, and validation. Uh, and that's, that's probably our most important topic, and I'll cover that in a following slide. Uh, after that, we will also be begin our application migration. We try to do that in parallel so that the application team can do that work while the database and migration team work on the, uh, the data and the, the DDL itself. Uh, so you could think of that you know, as rewriting Java code, ORMs, uh, and, and using best practices for MariaDB, which may be different from your legacy database. Uh, following that, we do our data migration. Um, we do our initial load of the data uh, along with some validation. We do some replication. We want to run QA. We want to make sure that we uh, involve all the stakeholders in the QA uh, and uh, and also involve connecting applications, other users. And then following that, we're ready to, to plan and conduct our cutover. So the migration team uh, may include many different roles. We want to ensure that we have all the available stakeholders, as I said on the last slide, uh, associated with the entire migration process. Uh, this could include your DBAs, your project managers, and business units. Uh, quality assurance as well as change and incident management teams can be valuable to you as well as you move through this, this migration. So let's start with the inventory and assessment phase. Uh, you want to examine your schema, procedures, data, and workload. You want to look at your, your system and database statistics for normal operation. Uh, and then you augment that database and, and operational information with the questionnaire uh, on your architecture, your teams, your business processes. So then we follow that up. We assess this collected data. And you want to review that for any issues. Here's where you build that plan. You begin to plan for any mitigation and any possible issues you may see. MariaDB experts look at issues flagged in the assessment and plan that mitigation carefully. An incident response plan should also be implemented during this migration phase. Once you're ready and you have that plan in place, you begin that schema migration. Sometimes this is actually one of the easier steps. You could use an automated process to migrate all schema objects, not including stored SQL code. Um, and your stored SQL code is triggers, functions, and procedures. Here we're just looking at your columns, your views, your indexes, uh, your tables, these types of objects. Uh, ideally, you're going to use a tool to translate the DDL to a format that's understood by MariaDB from your legacy database system. Following that, you do begin that SQL code migration. We begin the, that SQL code migration um, looking at your stored code. If you have a lot of it, it can take longer, right? So you're going to look at your triggers, functions, and stored procedures, and you'll begin to translate that code to MariaDB's SQL PSM, or use one of MariaDB's SQL mode compatibility parsers, like SQL mode equals Oracle, uh, to use PL SQL natively. Uh, the most important step here is to do in-out unit testing on the code as you bring it into MariaDB. Compare those results uh, to the same tests on the legacy database system. Let some automated processes do the heavy lifting here as much as possible, uh, but there will definitely be some manual intensive work in this phase. 
During the uh, SQL code migration, you also want to have the application code migration going in parallel. You want to have your developers update application code to work with MariaDB. You want to begin using those MariaDB connectors, remove the legacy database connectors, uh, change your ORM settings for good MariaDB performance. And you know, for example, you want to make sure Hibernate's building good queries, ensure it's up to date, uh, and building those queries that work well with MariaDB and not necessarily MySQL 5, for example. Uh, you want to Transfer, you want to transform that explicit SQL uh, to SQL PSM or MariaDB compatible PL SQL as well. And so that's where you'll work closely with the development team and, and other uh, project owners. Once we have that schema and SQL code in, uh, we want to look at the data migration. In the data migration phase, we want to migrate your data consistently in a collation safe way into MariaDB from your source database. So ideally, you'll use a tool to retrieve that data from the source database and bulk load it into MariaDB efficiently. Uh, I'll talk about tools in the next few slides as well, and I did mention some on a previous slide. Uh, but once your data is in, QA is a vital step here. I've seen clients do a migration process only to realize weeks after the cutover that a single data point or SQL object isn't working well. Perhaps the values came over garbled, or a column is not the correct uh, type for what the application is expecting. So automated scripts can do checksums, counts, and smoke testing. You're going to do your in-out unit testings for stored code. Uh, and at this point, you perform that with real data, uh, which is different than the SQL code migration step where you were using just unit tests. Uh, and then make sure your code is working with real data. Test all your connecting applications, your APIs, your batch jobs, and whatnot. Uh, and then once you're confident with that QA, this is where you begin to replicate your live changes from the legacy database to MariaDB. This is important for that seamless cutover. A replication service can be set up uh, to connect to the legacy database and copy changes into MariaDB in a real time and uh, fashion from that consistent point of time that we originally did that data migration. And I have some tools listed here, Symmetric DS being uh, one of the most valuable in your toolkit. Once we're confident in that data migration and that replication, uh, what we'll do is begin our production cutover. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at a production migration first, especially in cases where the QA and testing could have impacted your data uh, or your schema or your SQL code. You want to make sure that you've migrated your data again in a repeatable process. You want to repeat all those previous steps in a non-destructive QA uh, way at that point. Uh, if you, once you're past that production migration, you begin setting up your rollback. Uh, live changes should be replicated from MariaDB back to the legacy databases for a given period of time, uh, just in case a rollback is needed or necessary during the, the cutover window. And then a repli that replication service will copy those changes in real time exactly the way that we set up the previous replication. The switchover is probably the most critical here. Production users and applications begin using MariaDB. Ideally, you want to do this in a single maintenance window or atomic operation. Your applications, APIs, and load balancers, connectors, DSNs, and what have you are changed. Uh, and you do all that in that single deployment step uh, to connect to MariaDB. So at this point, you should be in production with MariaDB. Uh, everything should be working well. and you're ready to decommission your legacy database. This is usually done you know, a week, maybe a little bit longer. After that cutover, you want to make sure that you have confidence with all the stakeholders, your users are happy with MariaDB, uh, and moving forward with the, the new application. Uh, so you turn off your legacy database. You decommission it according to your internal decom processes. Um, but also consider long-term durable backup and wiping drives. So that was, that was just a basic overview of our methodology. You should now understand how we move through our migration process and are ready to, to dive into the deeper topics on this. Thank you.